Let's see, yep, that all looks good. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome, welcome to the Mike Bills YouTube channel. I've always wanted to do that. Recently, I posted this 40 volt solar power system that we built. I also have a separate video going over the inverter, taking it apart, taking a look at the inside and all that good stuff. Today's video is gonna be focused on settings. A lot of you guys have reached out to me asking about what settings that I use on this inverter. And it can be a little bit overwhelming if you've never messed with any of this stuff before. I remember the first time I hooked up my very first inverter that had tons of settings like this, I was very lost and it took me days to go through the manual and sort out how to set the system up for what I was using it for, as well as my battery chemistry and type and all that good stuff. It's very important that you figure these settings out early on. It also helps you with troubleshooting in the future because if you do set this wrong and the voltages aren't necessarily correct for what you're doing with it as far as the batteries, you might end up getting some weird errors even though your batteries aren't fully dead or your batteries are not gonna fully charge correctly. My goal in this video is to walk you guys through all the menus on this inverter and we're gonna really focus in on the battery settings. These are just my personal settings and my opinion on how I set up my inverter. You guys might wanna do it differently and that's totally okay, but I'm just gonna show you guys my method and how I do things and I'm gonna explain to you guys why I do the things I do. So let's get right into it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off some of these lights because the display on this is very dim and I want you guys to be able to see it very well. And there's glare. All right, so currently the inverter is completely turned on. So we're gonna go into the settings menu by just pushing the gear button and there we go. So if you see here, you have a setup parameter and then you have a value. So double zero. And if you guys wanna follow along at home and you have the same inverter as me, which is the Sungle Power 5,000 watt, 120 volt single phase model, all in one, I'm gonna be going off of this right here and it's gonna go over all the settings and everything. Like I said, I'm really just gonna skim through most of these, but I'm really gonna talk about the battery parameters the most because those are the most important in my opinion. I'm sorry about seeing my head in the glare. I don't think I can do anything about that. Anyway, so double zero, that's gonna be basically telling you you're in the main menu. All right, supply priority mode. By default, it's set to mix load. Basically, this is gonna prioritize how the unit's going to take in power either from the PV input or from the grid. Keep in mind, if it switches to the grid, it's gonna go into bypass mode. It's not gonna power your loads off the inverter. It's gonna power your loads off the grid and try to charge the batteries as well. I left that default because I just use it for solar only and that works just fine. Number two is gonna be output frequency. We're in the United States, you're gonna use 60 Hertz. If you're in Europe, you may use 50 Hertz, but it's set out of the box at 60. You can and leave that alone. Number three is gonna be your AC input voltage. Once again, the default's gonna be, I don't know, they're both say the same. Anyways, leave it on UPS, that means 120 volts. Number four, this is gonna be your battery to main. So the battery voltage is lower than this, the output will switch to mains power. I personally would set this to a very low amount if you're gonna be using the mains plug. Keep in mind, this is only going to work and it's only gonna trigger if you have this thing plugged into mains. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to a very low voltage, probably 40 volts. But if my battery ever hit 40 volts, that would mean each cell is at 2.5 volts per cell, which is not dangerous, but that does mean it's completely dead. So I'm just gonna set this to 40 volts, if it'll let me. I had that setting left out of the box stock because I don't ever have this thing plugged in. And one other thing I forgot to mention guys, as far as setting four, setting the voltage low enough to where the inverter is gonna trigger into switching over to grid power mode, that's only going to happen if you have mode one, which is supply priority mode. You have to have that selected to battery first because essentially if it's on battery first, the battery voltage has to go below the setting of setting four for it to actually switch over. So if you have it on mixed load, Setting four actually doesn't matter. Setting five, mains to battery, basically same thing. If you have your supply priority mode set to one of the two that we don't have it set to, you do need to program this. If you guys need more information on these values specifically, let me know. But as far as I know, no one ever really uses these. I'm not personally using them. So we're just gonna keep it rolling. All right, number six, charging mode. This mode basically is gonna allow you to use solar and grid power to charge the battery. So if you plug the inverter in, the inverter goes into charging mode. Batteries will actually be charged by the grid and the MPPT solar charge controller will also be functioning at the same time. That's the default, it's on hybrid mode. I'm gonna leave it on hybrid mode, but you can switch that to where it's only solar and the mains will not be doing anything. Maximum charging current, same thing, you can set this to pretty much whatever you want. I have mine set to 60 amps, which is the default. But if for some reason you're making a lot of solar, like if you max this thing out solar wise, you could potentially make easily over 60 amps. I'm gonna leave it at 60 for now because I don't have enough panels connected to this to even hit that. If you do hook up a lot of solar panels, you need to raise this number up. Otherwise you're gonna end up limiting what your system can do. All right, number eight, here we go. This is the one that confuses the most people. This is gonna be our battery type. So currently I have it set to LFP16. If you choose one of their pre-made battery profiles, which this would be, it'll preset a bunch of stuff for you. 
What I noticed is when I had my inverter in LFP16 and I was actually testing one of my server rack batteries, when the voltage got to, I don't remember the exact voltage, but the voltage didn't really get that low and the alarm started going off, even though we weren't even close to the bottom of the battery. So I'm actually gonna change this to user defined. If you're curious about what the actual battery profiles will set the machine to, if you go to page 39 in the manual, it will actually have this table and it's gonna show you exactly what the presets will be. So if you don't like the presetted voltages for any of these settings for whatever reason, you can kind of get an idea of what the setting will be and change it to user defined and then you can reset these settings to whatever you want. And if you notice at the top here, it says for lead acid battery. And if you flip the page, this is gonna be the one for lithium. I believe this is gonna apply for most people. And what I was saying before is if you look here on LFP16, the under voltage alarm kicked on at 49 volts. And honestly, that's a little bit too high for my liking personally, because at 49 volts, your battery is not, or should not be close to being empty. There's still some capacity there. So that's the main reason I wanted to go and set my own setting. So I chose to go user defined. However, if you choose to use one of their preset profiles, I do believe it will work just fine. But in my case, because I did want to have full control over all the parameters and voltages, I'm going to do user defined and I'm going to set all the voltages manually and set everything up correctly to where this will 100% work just fine and also be very safe. We're going to hit the arrow and we're going to select user. Bink. Perfect. Now, when we select user defined, we're going to be able to set all our own voltages to what we, to what we want. And I personally would rather do that because we can set our mins and our maxes however you want to cycle your batteries. Keep in mind, if you do select user defined and you put in the wrong value, you can potentially damage your batteries. So only do that if you really know what you're doing. But I guess that's the whole point of this video is I'm going to show you guys how to do it. All right, boost voltage. All right, for setting nine, that's going to be your boost voltage. This is going to be adjustable because we selected user defined. What I do is I set the boost voltage and the float voltage to the same number. And that number is going to be the maximum voltage I want my battery to see. So in this case, with a lithium iron phosphate battery, a 16S pack, you can go all the way up to 58.4 volts. And that's going to put you at 3.65 volts per cell, which is the absolute max you want to do. However, for me personally, when I'm cycling these things a lot, I like to put that voltage just a little bit lower, just to stress the battery out a little bit less. And you're not losing that much capacity doing that. So if you take 56.8 volts, divide that by 16, that gives us a maximum charge per cell of 3.55 volts, which is plenty safe. We're gonna leave that at 56.8. Next is time. I just leave that alone, but this is gonna be the length of time at which it's gonna stay in boost mode. And basically what this timer does is once you hit your boost mode voltage, the timer is gonna start. After you stayed in that voltage for a certain amount of time, it's gonna step back into float voltage. So that's actually the next setting we're gonna check out. Float voltage, we're gonna set this also to 56.8. And there we go. So both those voltages are the same. So essentially they're just gonna equal each other out anyways. And the maximum voltage that the inverter is gonna charge the battery in our case is gonna be 56.8 volts. Once again, this is what I personally prefer. You guys can play around with the voltages on your end if you want. All I would say is if you're gonna use the user defined on a lithium iron phosphate battery, just let those two values match and I do not think you'll have any issues. All right, over discharge voltage. If the voltage is lower than this, along with a time limit, the inverter output will shut down. So I put mine at 42 volts. So if you do 42 divided by 16, that gives you 2.62 volts per cell. Your lower limit on a lithium iron phosphate cell is 2.5. That is your absolute do not go any lower. So even at 42 volts, we have a buffer. And if your battery gets to 42 volts, it's pretty much dead anyways, due to the flat discharge curve of lithium iron phosphate batteries anyways. So we're gonna set that to 42. The next one's gonna be a time limit. I just put it at five seconds, that's totally fine. 14 is gonna be the voltage at which the alarm is gonna start beeping. So basically this is gonna be the warning before the unit actually shuts off. So the output will still continue to run, but you're gonna get a beeping. I set that to 44 volts, so that's two volts above the actual shutdown voltage. The next one is gonna be the battery discharge limit. This is like your hard cut. So a better explanation for setting 15. Setting 12 is actually what's gonna turn the output off of the inverter but the inverter is still gonna to continue to run. The charge controller and all that stuff, I believe will still function. Setting 15, if you get to that voltage, the inverter and everything will shut down. The whole unit will completely go offline. That way it's not drawing any current from the battery. So that's kind of the difference between 12 and 15. So you wanna set the 15, that's gonna be your absolute lowest limit that you want the battery to go. But in theory, if you set your 12, 13 and 14 correctly and you stop using the inverter 
or you start charging your battery before then, setting 15 won't really do anything. It's more or less just a safety to prevent you from over discharging your battery. And 40 divided by 16 is gonna give you 2.5 volts per cell. So that's gonna be your hard limit. 16 is gonna be equalization. We definitely do not need to use that in a lithium iron phosphate battery. So we're gonna go ahead and set that to DIS, which is gonna be no equalizing at all. Now, all the settings after this, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, those all have to do with equalization. But because we have it set to disabled, none of these settings are gonna matter. So this setting doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. And you guys get the idea, all the way up to 21. So none of those are gonna matter. You can just leave those how they're set from the factory. That's pretty much what I have these on. 22 is gonna be eco mode. We're just gonna fly through the rest of these settings just cause we're kind of going over everything anyways. Eco mode is gonna be essentially if the output of the inverter detects less than 50 watts of energy draw, it's gonna turn the output off. It's disabled from the box. I guess we can just turn that on. No, we'll leave that alone. 23 is gonna be your overload, automatic restart. So if you overload the inverter, the inverter will automatically restart. 24 is gonna be auto restart over temperature. Same thing, if it gets too hot, it'll automatically shut down and restart once the temperature cools off. Buzzer alarm, you can turn that on or off. We're gonna obviously have it on. Number 26, this is basically gonna tell you whenever you switch from like AC power from the grid back over the battery power, if you're plugging in the inverter into the grid, it's gonna beep at you and let you know. We're gonna leave that on. 27 is gonna be your inverter overload to bypass. Basically, if you overload the inverter, it will switch to mains if the inverter is overloaded. It's enabled out of the box. All right, 28. This is also another very important parameter that you may need to adjust. This is gonna be, if you plug the inverter into the wall and the inverter starts charging your batteries, how much current the inverter is actually gonna push into the batteries. Default, it's set to 40 amps. The max you can set it to is 40 amps. You cannot plug this into a single 120 volt outlet with 40 amps of current it's gonna pull over 2000 watts. So what I did is I set it to 20 amps. That's gonna pull a little over 1000 watts. It's gonna be safe for a standard house circuit because if you try to pull 40 amps, you're probably either gonna melt something in the plug or you're gonna trip your breaker. RS-485 address. This is if you're gonna try to parallel inverters and you need them to communicate. That's when you're really gonna mess with this. For the next couple settings, it's only gonna matter if you're running these in parallel. So 31 we can skip, 32 we can skip. 33 we can skip. All right, setting 35 is gonna be your battery under voltage recovery point. When the battery is under voltage, the battery voltage should be greater than this set value to restore inverter output. Out of the box, it's set to 52 volts. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I don't think this really matters unless you completely kill your battery. So if you do completely discharge your battery and you want the inverter to kick on sooner when the battery voltage starts to come back up, you can set this number a little bit lower and you'll have output sooner. So we're just gonna leave that at 52, that's fine. All right guys, that's really gonna be it for the settings as far as what I use for my inverter. Now, if you're curious about what settings as far as battery type sets what voltages, if you go all the way to the back of the manual, it actually does show you all the preset voltages that you select if you preset one of their battery profiles. Honestly, for most beginners, if you just set it to one of their pre-made profiles, you will not have any issues. I would do that, preset it first, run it, and if you do start to have issues with low voltage alarms, kicking in before you think they should. Just reset your user define and go through all the settings like I just did right now and set all your values the way I showed you guys to do it and you'll be 100% a-okay. Hopefully this video wasn't too long and boring. I really was just trying to give you guys as much detail as possible. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know if this helped anyone out there and I'll see y'all in the next one.